From the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrilee Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, revitalization of our critical mineral supply chain. We'll tell you about efforts on the Hill to ensure a stable supply of these building blocks of our economy. My guests today are Nevada U.S. Senator Dean Heller and our Thank special you. guest, Mr. Hal Quinn the president and CEO of the National Mining Association. Thanks, both of you, for Thank being you. here. We rely on minerals for everything from the smallest computer chips to the tallest skyscrapers. That's what Alaska U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski said in April when she drafted a bill aimed at keeping our nation competitive with foreign nations and promoting a stable mineral supply. And today on Ion Washington, we'll tell you why it's crucial that the U.S. has an adequate and stable supply of minerals. We'll tell you why my guests are concerned that we are increasingly relying on other countries to meet our domestic minerals needs. And will update you on concerns over underperformance at Nevada's and the nation's mines relative to other countries. The 18 minerals and metals mined in Nevada's are real gems. They are the building blocks of our economy. And our guest, Mr. Quinn, has been concerned for some time that the nation was losing sight of the importance of minerals and was relying on other nations to meet our mineral needs. So he was thrilled to learn that big mining advocates like Senator Murkowski and our Senator Heller were working to lay out a constructive path forward regarding an adequate and stable supply of minerals. Senator Murkowski's Critical Minerals Policy Act of 2011, which is to be introduced soon, seeks to revitalize the mineral supply chain, ensuring the U.S. is able to meet its own mineral needs. In a statement about the act, Mr. Quinn said, quote, Despite our mineral wealth, the U.S. has increasingly relied on others to meet its domestic mineral needs in manufacturing, technology, infrastructure, and national security. This is not a sustainable trend. And Senator, first of all, we need to congratulate you Thank for you. being named to the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, yes. um, of which uh, uh, Sen Senator Murkowski is the ranking member yes, as well. Right. And um, I know you're a co-sponsor of the Murkowski bill. I wanted to start with this. Why should our audience, or indeed all Americans, care about a mineral policy? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, and thanks for having me on your show. I was on the Natural Resource Committee on the, in the House, <laughs> and, and I got off that committee um, to get on the Ways and Means Committee. So it's good to be back back on to the uh, Natural Resource Committee to help Hal and, uh, and the industry um, as we did when we were in the House. And I think there was some disappointment when I moved over to the Ways and Means Committee uh, with the uh, agricultural and mining uh, industries in Nevada. So it's good to be back there, good to be part of it, sure. good to work with Senator Murkowski um, on these top types of issues. Uh, you know, you mentioned there's 18 minerals in Nevada. I mean, uh, besides gold and silver, which uh, we're probably known the most for, you know, we're talking about lead, lithium, chrome, Molly, some of these other issues that are critically important for many reasons. I mean, everything from our cell phones um, to uh, to defense, a mm -hmm. uh, number of issues, and that we're, re we're relying heavier and more heavily on foreign nations like China in order to, pr to uh, provide the necessary minerals that we have in abundance here in this country. And that's why Senator Murkowski wants to move forward, just as we're trying to be independent in our, in our oil, oil policy here in this country, we also want to be independent in our mineral policy in this country. You know, Mr. Quinn, with, with so much attention on and the reliance on foreign oil, there, uh, there isn't as much focus on our growing reliance on other countries uh, for, for minerals. And, and you've really con expressed a lot of concern about this issue. Well, that's right, Marilee. I mean, everybody in the country is uh, aware of the perils we have with a 50 percent uh, dependence on foreign oil. But here in the United States, 50 percent of our mineral needs for manufacturing sector alone come from uh, sources outside the United States. And we've doubled our uh, import dependence uh, in 20 years, so that is a deep concern. W would you explain, Senator, the, the connection between in-country mineral production and a safer country? Yeah. Well, first of all, let's take a topic that I think is most important for the state of Nevada, and that is what the mineral industry means uh, to counties like Elko and Lander and White Pine County, mm -hmm. some of these uh, uh, Humboldt County, these counties that... Uh, 
pull a tremendous amount of minerals and are very obviously mining oriented uh, counties. Um, if you look at the unemployment rate in, in these counties, they're half what the state average is. Um, and if you take a look at the, uh, the industry itself and the, and the pay, um, the average salary, uh, it's, it's the highest paying industry. Um, in the state of Nevada. So I think it's critically important, I think, for the state of Nevada to, to have a healthy uh, mineral industry, not only because it creates jobs, but it, it creates good jobs, good sure. paying jobs um, that uh, families uh, can rely on. And in, in this economy, uh, when things are getting tough, uh, I, I think that uh, we got to look at uh, what is working out there and make sure that uh, we, we don't hurt those industries also. I mean, Mr. Quinn, the, the bill is aimed at, quote, revitalizing the mineral supply chain. How much revitalization are we talking about here? What, what, is, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, uh, let, let's look as we talked last time about the, uh, the interdependence of, of minerals and the rest of the uh, economy. If we go from uh, $64 billion worth of material, value of material that we mine each year, that translates eventually to finished product worth $2.1 trillion, which is 14% of our GDP. Wow. So uh, every industry, if we start losing the front end of our supply chain, the mineral side, we're going to start losing the rest of the downstream industries, whether that's manufacturing, technology, telecommunications. Mm -hmm. So when we lose minerals, we lose the uh, downstream industries, we lose the technology, the innovations, and of course the high wage jobs that the senator just mentioned. My goodness. When I in Washington returns, we're going to tell you more about what minerals mean to Nevada and to this nation, and that's right after this. You're watching I on Washington with Marilee Joyce. Brought to you by the Southern Nevada Water Authority, the National Mining Association, the Frias Companies, Caesars Entertainment, NV Energy, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, Western Lithium Corporation, and Skyline Restaurant and Casino. Sunrise, the Mojave Desert. Just another day in Southern Nevada? Think again, pal. Millions of concerned citizens are throwing in to conserve water. Yes, from the welcoming hills of Boulder City to the friendly streets of Spring Valley. Everyone's playing their part. Way to go, Joe. It's a desert out there. Be water smart. Go to snwa.com. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip. That's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias. Safe. Reliable. Simply the best. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at nma.org. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the need to revitalize our nation's mineral supply chain. My guests today are Nevada U.S. Senator Dean Heller and our special guest, Mr. Hal Quinn, the president and CEO of the National Mining Association. We talk a lot about gold on this program when we cover mining, so maybe it surprised you to hear last segment that gold is just one of 18 major minerals and metals mined in Nevada. Gold, silver, copper, dolomite, limestone, lithium compounds, mercury, precious opal, and turquoise, among others. Here's the quantity of some of the biggies mined in our state. More than 6 million ounces of gold, nearly 8.5 million ounces of silver, 573 tons 
tons of barite. Nevada even produces 16,000 tons of salt. And get a load of this, without gold, your phone, your smartphone could not transmit messages. Without silver, your microwave would not work. Without lithium, that new hybrid car, wouldn't function. Without diatomite, impurities wouldn't be filtered out of your drinking water. Now, my guests say that the Critical Minerals Policy Act of 2011, it's needed more than ever, among other things. It directs the U.S. Geological Survey to establish a list of minerals critical to the U.S. economy, and it sets out a comprehensive set of policies to ensure the nation is able to meet its own mineral needs. It also aims to bolster production, protect the environment, expand manufacturing, and promote research. Cycling. Mr. Quinn, what happens if this nation continues on its current path without this act, without uh, this revitalization of our mineral supply chain? Well, what will happen is, as, as I indicated earlier, we, we lose the investment here in the United States on the front end of the supply chain, and that, that goes overseas where there are reliable supplies, uh, alternative supplies of uh, minerals. The industries that depend on these minerals will also eventually re, uh, relocate themselves where they, they can obtain those minerals uh, on a more reliable basis. Senator, it seems this policy also would mean uh, investments in mineral production, it would be more attractive, and wouldn't that attract badly needed jobs to Nevada? Well, think about what this does mean to the state of Nevada in, in revenue, uh, probably a hundred million dollars plus uh, into the state coffers uh, for critical services uh, that uh, the state of Nevada provides to its citizens. So every time uh, this takes a hit or every time we discuss or for example uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, secretary uh, to the interior uh, discusses more regulations and makes it more difficult for us to, to do the necessary mining in order to uh, to, to pull the stuff out of the ground uh, you were talking about all these uh, different minerals and, and what they mean and, and what they go into I mean if you take everything we're wearing here uh, your jewelry to your clothing uh, to the makeup that you wear all of that all of that has a portion of mining uh, involved in mining so there obviously See, there's a huge impact on our ability to to, uh, to to go after our own own resources here in this country, and clearly in Washington D.C., whether you're talking mining, uh, whether it's gold, silver, lithium, the, the uh, myriad of 18 uh, minerals you're talking about, even to our oil reserves and shale oil in this country, I think it's just critically important that we become independent here. Um, in this uh, in this country, you mentioned when you talk about it on the Hill. I want to take just a second to sure. talk about the partnership between. You two, between my two guests today, uh, Mr. Quinn, how do you work with the senator to help, uh, for lack of a better word, educate uh, folks who maybe they don't have mining in their state or they don't quite understand that uh, you know your smartphone doesn't work without gold or et cetera? How do you two work together to sort of educate his colleagues and and the other folks you deal with every well, day? Well, we work closely together, but as you can tell from what you just heard. Uh, th this senator uh, is very literate and, uh, on, on terms of the issue, so we rely upon Senator Heller to actually educate his colleagues and uh, raise the awareness and in, on the bill we just talked about, which is really a critical bill for us, uh, he, he'll go out and talk to uh, many of his colleagues and explain what the bill does and why it's uh, why it's in their interest. As why you it's did in the, in the interest, House, now right. you're doing in the Senate. How, how right. do you talk to others who maybe they don't understand the importance of First of these all, mining I, issues? First of all, I will admit that I lean heavily on how uh, <laughs> when it comes to some of these issues, and our office does, uh, in, in trying to get some of the vital statistics necessary in order to talk to them. <clears throat> One of the things that I think is critically important is try to bring some of these lawmakers out to Nevada to actually visit some of these mines, whether they're pit mines or underground mines, so, so that they get an idea. But Keep in mind also what may be gold mining, silver mining, and the other uh, minerals we talk about in the West. They'll have coal mining in the East. So you get go to West Virginia. They understand mining. It's just a different product um, that they're mining out there. So we try to help them understand our mining through coal mining. Um, by being on the uh, on the resource committee, talking to everybody, helping them understand that there aren't a lot of differences. It may be a different product that we're sure. pulling out of the ground um, in, in different forms, um, but certainly what affects West Virginia is going to affect Nevada. What affects Nevada will affect West Virginia. So we try to keep it in that concept uh, so, so that the principles uh, make sense to everybody. Do you expect a lot of support on this bill? Um, we would. Uh, when, we, when we talk about this, the senator explains, uh, when we explain the why this is in the national interest, mm -hmm. you'd have to question why um, anybody would not be uh, supportive of this sure. particular bill. And what the bill does is really calls for an assessment of what our needs are, uh, an assessment of what we have here in terms of uh, to meet those requirements, and then looking at what are some of the impediments for further investment so we can fully live up to our potential 
as we like to say, uh, the, uh, the success of this country depends on us, our industry being successful. Yeah. And I think that's uh, something that Senator Heller, as you can see, is well equipped to explain to his colleagues. I, I would like to add something to that. I think that uh, education is just important uh, to the administration and to the Interior Secretary. Sure. Um, I'm more frustrated, I think, with the administration than I am with my fellow colleagues in trying to move forward. Um, you know, every time they add a new regulation, they start talking about wildlands and uh, putting more uh, uh, more uh, uh, restrictions on your ability uh, to do the necessary research, necessary research and development. Every time the administration sure. talks about this, you know, it takes ten years now to get a permit. Senator, I think ten years. I think your bill is going to pass the minute their blackberries <laughs> stop working yeah. without the minerals Absolutely. needed. Absolutely, about forty-two minerals are needed for that. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. Sunrise, the Mojave Desert. Just another day in Southern Nevada? Think again, pal. Millions of concerned citizens are throwing in to conserve water. Yes, from those hipsters in Henderson to those frolicking families around Lone Mountain, everyone's playing their part. Nice frolicking. It's a desert out there. Be water smart. Go to snwa.com. Every day, thousands of people in northern Nevada don't get enough to eat. One out of five children in northern Nevada go to bed hungry every night. But you can do something about it. Catholic Community Services of Northern Nevada has been providing help and creating hope in our community for more than 65 years. By donating food, time, or money, you can make a difference in a hungry person's life. When you make your generous donation to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, you're helping to fight the scourge of hunger in Northern Nevada. In these tough economic times, now more than ever, we need to help those less fortunate. To find out how you can donate to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, call, click, or stop by. And together, we can end hunger in Northern Nevada. make our lives better. Will geothermal, wind, and solar energy be a bigger part of our future? Yes. And soon it will all be in our backyard. Learn more at nvenergy.com. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of efforts to revitalize our mineral supply and other ways to strengthen and protect the mining industry. We've been visiting with two big advocates of that, Nevada U.S. Senator Dean Heller and our special guest, Mr. Hal Quinn, president of the National Mining Association. Okay, you know why my guests say a minerals policy is needed to meet our nation's needs, but now I want to revisit a related concern that Mr. Quinn shared with our Eye on, Wadi, our Eye on Washington audience when we visited with him earlier this year. It was about a report released that put a lot of worry into top mining leaders that report released last winter was conducted by McKinsey and Company for the NMA, and it says Nevada and other mining 
mining states are losing the edge that the U.S. is underperforming the rest of the world in the development of its mineral resources, it says countries like Australia, Canada, and others are outpacing us in terms of production. Mr. Quinn told us on that show that this news is terrible. It means not only a greater reliance on foreign suppliers, but also a slowdown for the economic recovery as jobs related to mineral production are lost. And Mr. Quinn, you expressed a huge concern then that as countries outpace us in production, it means that, uh, for example, more mining technologies will be produced elsewhere. Remind us about your concern. Well, yes. I mean, let's be clear that the mines we have today in this country are top of class and we have the best workforce in the world. Sure. What we're worried about is future investment in this country to sustain uh, the growth uh, uh, that we need in terms of uh, supplying the minerals. So, again, if we have uh, a drop in investment and we don't have a policy framework in this country that attracts investment, we're going to not only lose the supply chain, we lose the associated industries that support us as well as the industries that depend on us. So, uh, Senator, I, I want to update our audience on, on what you and Mr. Quinn are doing to, you know, address this underperformance issue. But, you know, as a huge advocate for Nevada mining, as right. you've always been, you know, th th this underperformance issue, it, it is threatening. Well, well, as we have discussed, both Hal and myself, how critically important it is to the state of Nevada uh, for the for the rural counties. Uh, again, those counties. Uh, unemployment levels are half what the average is for the state, okay. and the uh, and the type of jobs and and the and the salary levels uh, are are nearly double what the net, what the state average is also. So it's a good industry and it brings a tremendous amount of revenue into the state of Nevada okay. to provide for the uh, health care services, the uh, the education services, and everything else for the state of Nevada. And uh, and I'll tell you, if we continue to talk here in Washington D.C., Nick Rahal, for example, is chairman, former chairman of the Natural Resource Committee on the House side, continue to talk about new taxes, larger government, uh, more uh, direct regulations on the mining industry itself, it's going to make it more and more difficult, one, for Nevada to survive, but for the industry itself, most importantly, mm -hmm. to survive. So uh, I, I think Hal said during the break, uh, you take your, uh, your cell phone, there's 42 minerals, 42 minerals that produce mm -hmm. uh, that cell phone, and when they stop, as you mentioned, <laughs> that's when they're going to take, uh, take notice. We just don't want that to happen. Exactly. M M Mr. Quinn, uh, w would you remind our audience of the reason we're lagging in mineral metal development in this country? Well, it's certainly not because we, we lack the, the uh, minerals. We have probably the richest endowment in the world. Uh, our bench is there long and deep. Uh, but we, we don't have a, a policies that really support further investment. Uh, as Senator mentioned earlier, permitting. It takes almost 10 years now to get uh, all the authorizations necessary. So that's uh, so when you can go to other countries and uh, put in a billion dollar investment and get a return within two years. That's a the value proposition. The difference is rather clear. And then we have a very high tax structure here. Effective tax rate on the metals industry is about 41 percent. You know, Senator, we're almost out of time for this okay. segment. I want to let you say, you know, we do uh, we, we focus on the reliance of uh, on foreign countries, um, you know, to meet those needs. We, we need to take that a step forward. The again, the ripple effect of jobs uh, here as as things go, mining operations and what have you go overseas. Jobs lost in Nevada, and for you, right. jobs in Nevada are critically your, important. Your top two words critically right now. Critically important right now in the state of Nevada, sure. as the highest unemployment uh, employed state. Uh, uh, in the in the country right now, but we're not competitive. That's the bottom line. I think Hal and I are that that's the point. And I think the point that you're trying to make, we're not competitive with some of these foreign countries because of our tax structure and because of the, uh, uh, over regulating the industry. That needs to change. Okay, we'll be right back with our mailbag letter right after this. Sunrise, the Mojave Desert. Just another day in Southern Nevada. Think again, pal. Millions of concerned citizens are throwing in to conserve water. Yes, from the sunny folks at Sunrise Mountain to our pals out in Red Rock. Everyone's playing their part. Saving water is fun? I'll say. It's a desert out there. Be water smart. Go to snwa.com. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Built on a fleet of just five cabs bought in 1966 by founder Charlie Frias, 
Frias Transportation is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Today, Frias has a fleet of nearly 1,000 vehicles and more than 2,000 employees. As an industry and community leader, Frias continues to create the future of transportation technology and management and actively supports the community. Continuing the legacy of quality service in the Las Vegas Valley, simply the best. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. Sunrise, the Mojave Desert. Just another day in Southern Nevada? Think again, pal. Millions of concerned citizens are throwing in to conserve water. Yes, from those hipsters in Henderson to those frolicking families around Lone Mountain, everyone's playing their part. Nice frolicking. It's a desert out there. Be water smart. Go to snwa.com. And we are back with our closing segment of Eye on Washington. It's our mailbag segment when we tell you about an issue that the congressional mailbag page of the Joyce Communication website has been getting a lot of correspondence about. And then we read one of your letters on the air, and we let our guests respond to you right here. In this case, we can get a response from both guests today. It's about mining. And this uh, uh, we have from uh, Joseph of uh, Thousand Springs, Nevada. He says, Dear Senator Heller, mining is the one industry doing well, has the potential to help turn our state around, but it's still heavily regulated. What is being done in Congress to help mining companies expand so they can help give people jobs? What do you say to Joseph? Well, first of all, Joseph's right, is that it is a very heavily regulated industry, and that's why we're becoming less and less competitive. I think the key to this is for our delegation to work together. Uh, Senator Reid and myself, they're continually passing uh, more regulations on the House side that come over here, and, and, uh, and uh, our Senate delegation has been very successful in stopping some of this onerous regulation. Uh, I'd like to see it cut back a little bit. I'd like to sit down with the Interior sec Secretary and talk about uh, how onerous some of these regulations are and see if we can cut that permitting process from 10 years to two years to get more investments into the state of Nevada, create more jobs, more high-paying jobs, and, uh, and at the same time help revitalize uh, the economy in the state of Nevada. The regulation, I think, must be your top frustration every day when you're... <laughs> Uh, it, it is. It, it is, and that uh, we need regulatory certainty to attract investment, and part of that certainty is making sure we can get permits in a reasonable time, and that the regulators give us reasonable basis uh, for what they want in terms of the performance they want from us. You know, as we're closing out today, Senator, how realistic would it be that uh, you, for instance, getting that that permit process cut down, you know, chop eight years off it? I mean, chop a couple years <laughs> off it. Maybe you'd be happy to start with, but yeah, what 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 kind of support do you even? Oh, I, I would anticipate that there would be reasonable support. I mm -hmm. mean, reasonable minds. We're going to create reasonable legislation. Sure. If we can talk to those that uh, clearly understand the depth of this problem okay. and that the problem is getting worse, um, again, goes back to the cell phone. If they start getting cut off or their cell phones aren't working, clearly, clearly they're going to understand there's a real need in this country. Well, good luck with that and with the bill. And thanks both of you for Thank being you. here today. That does wrap up this week's Eye on Washington. You can send a letter to one of Nevada's senators or House members. Go to our website joycecommunications.com and check out more federal issues that impact Nevada while you're there. Thanks for joining us today on Ion Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington. Good day.